today. <laughs> oh, all better. I don't know what's been happening. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to another day of reading with me. Today we're going to continue to look at a different country, so I hope you have been enjoying learning about India. Today we're going to be reading a book about the Japanese culture. So let's go. This book is called Yuki and the Thousand Carriers, and it's written by Gloria Wellen and illustrated by Jan Naskimbin. Again, if you like learning about these different countries, I challenge you to get on Get Epic because that's where I found all of these great books. Here's a quick author's note on why the author chose to write this beautiful book. Yuki, come at once, mother says. Your father has been called to Edo by the noble shogun who watches over our country. We must prepare for a long journey. Take all you need. One thousand men go with us to carry our baskets and chests. I do not want to go, but it would be disrespectful to say so. My honorable teacher throws up her hands. Such a journey will take many weeks. What are your lessons? Each day you must write a haiku. And Yuki, do not forget me. So they are setting off on this journey, and they're going to have to pack as much as they can, but they're probably going to have to leave some things behind because it's going to be really hard to carry all that stuff. Her teacher is really worried, and so she says, you have to write a haiku every day. And the haiku is a short little poem. So let's see what she writes about on this journey. What do you think she could write about on this journey? Good answers. I packed 20 of my favorite umbrellas. 50 of my best kimonos and all my fans. I take brushes and ink and many sheets of rice paper for the haiku. I tuck my little dog Kita into the basket that hold my sashes. Mother and I climb into our palaquin, the wooden box that we ride in. There are cushions of silk to sit upon and a silk cushion for Kita as well. There are wooden shutters so we can see out, but no one can gaze in at us. Six carriers lift the palaquin on their shoulders and we set out. When we come to the gate, the guards open it, bow low, and let us pass. I write my first haiku. Once outside the gate, how will I find my way back? Will home disappear? The shouters run ahead crying out, Lie down, lie down in the dust! All must bow to us, for father is the governor of the province. If her father is the governor, the leader, what does that make her? After the shouters come the samurai with their fierce looks, and then father wearing a robe embroidered in gold. I can hear the bells on his horse. Finally, it is our turn. The carriers are last, their backs bent low under their burdens. We are a dragon, our 1,000 carriers, the dragon's long tail. Rain begins to fall. The round hats of the carriers are like umbrellas. I put my hand out to feel the warm spring shower. Kita licks my wet hands. Rain coaxes flowers. Pear blossoms will soon bloom here. I will not see them. So what's going on so far? Yuki and her family are having to leave their home. And they're traveling and making this long journey. How's she feeling about the journey? How can we prove that? The sun hides behind the hills. It is finished with our day. The road disappears in the dark until the torches of the carriers bring it back. Okasan, I ask mother, when will we eat? Where will we sleep? Peek through the shutters, mother says. In the breeze, the lanterns of an inn wave at me. Before our journey is over, mother tells me, we will have stayed at 53 inns. And an inn is like a hotel. For many long nights, my bed at home lies empty, just waiting for me. Mother and I share an eight-mat room. Here's what I eat. Bean curd soup, sushi, shrimp, dumplings, pickled ginger, and carp. Kita eats everything but the ginger. I am asleep before the oil in my lamp is all gone. With a full stomach, even the wooden pillow holds my head softly. So remember, we're trying to compare different cultures to our own. So are any of the foods that she eats similar to anything we eat? Have you ever had sushi? Have you ever had shrimp? We come to a river. 
A blue ribbon we have to cross. The horses plunge into the water. The carriers take off their kimonos and bundle them on their heads. Our palaquin is placed on a raft and ten carriers wade it across the river. Not even my toes get wet. River is busy making its own long journey. It doesn't look back. At last night's in, the shampoo lady washed my mother's hair. Then she washed mine and rolled it into a big puff. My hair is stuck with so many hairpins, I feel like a porcupine. This morning our paths follow the river. The carriers sing songs as they travel. They bathe their tired feet and splash in the water to cool themselves. Trees march along the bank with us. Willows lean over the river's edge like women washing their long hair. How about that? Can you relate to that? When you go on a vacation or on a journey, are there people around you who are taking care of you and washing your hair and doing your hair? Is that similar to us or a little bit different? Today, the path climbs up the side of the mountain. I hear the carriers groan for our palaquin is heavy on their shoulders. At the mountaintop, I see my father on his horse far away from me. The path clings to the mountain's edge. Okasan, I ask, will we fall off? No, 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 mother says. Thousands have gone safely before us and thousands will come after. Narrow mountain path is a strong hand that holds us back, won't let us turn back. And if you notice, the haikus are written in bold letters. They're a little bit darker and they are three lines. A white surprise! The snow forgot it was spring. The carriers tread carefully on the slippery path. I feed snowflakes to Kita. Snow on the treetops, snow on the carrier's hats. Snow hides the way home. A fox trots through the woods. Mother tells me a fox is cunning and can change itself into a man, but it cannot lose its tail. I think that would be a funny looking man. Kita growls and mother says a dog can see through the fox's tricks. I would change into a bird, fly out the window soon. I would be home. Do y'all notice a pattern in her haikus? What does she keep talking about in all of her little poems? Why do you think she keeps mentioning something? Why do you think she keeps mentioning the same thing? Tucked into the mountain is a village of little houses. They huddle together like good friends. Smoke rises from their cooking fires. On the clotheslines, brightly colored kimonos flap in the breeze. I see the children happily playing at games. Their homes close by. Our inn tonight is in the village of Middletown. We are halfway between Kyoto, where our honored emperor lives, and the shogun's palace in Edo. Our room in the inn is only a five-mat room. Worse, our bedclothes are dirty. Mother gives the innkeeper such a scolding, he runs from the room with his hands over his ears. Kido chases after him. Today, the way home, as close as the way to Edo. Tomorrow, further. So she's getting farther and farther away from home. How is that making her feel? And how can you prove that's how she feels? At the bottom of the mountain is the sea. Fishing boats with their white wings sail into the harbor like a flock of gulls. The moon climbs the sky. Fishermen at sea follow the moon's golden path, return safely home. There are many fishermen in this town. For our dinner tonight, we have broiled eel, shark, and octopus. In the morning when a rooster awakens me, I see all the fishing boats have disappeared. Gulls write their haiku in the sky, dipping and darting, not caged in a box. Hmm, I think there's a metaphor in that haiku. Remember, a metaphor is a comparison between two things that are not alike. What do you think she might be comparing to something in a caged box? The carriers shout with excitement. Mother and I peek out. There is the great city of Edo. We cross Nihonbashi Bridge, the point from which all distances in Japan are measured. Path goes two ways. I have traveled one way. When will I travel back? There are many people. There are more houses than I can count. Kido barks at a city dog. I cling to mother so that she does not lose me. Our procession stops at Edo Castle where the Shogun lives. 
Before father enters the castle, he turns and smiles at me to let me know I have been with him on the journey. I say sayonara to our 1,000 carriers. Everywhere I go, something to delight my eyes. I stop looking back. Have y'all ever heard the word sayonara? It's a way to say goodbye. Who knew that that word came from Japan? So what in this book is similar to things that we've experienced in our culture? Or something that you've experienced in your life? I challenge y'all to think about how your life is not that different from people's life in other countries. We have a lot more in common than we think. We also have some differences. So what are some things that are different between us and Japan or any other country? Your challenge for today is to again get on that IXL and complete those assignments. It's almost going to be Friday and they need to be done. Are you going to earn a pizza? I don't know. I love you all. I miss you all. Hope to see you soon.